Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. Today is episode one, and I'm going to show you some features of user interface that helps you get started in a new project. I've launched Revit, and I will start by creating new Revit model file. You can start by creating a new Revit model file using no templates or one of the default templates available to you. If you have a custom template from your organization already available, you can browse it and start a new project file using that. Using a template file makes your workflow very efficient because you can preload libraries and have settings that you most frequently use. So it really gives you a good head start in your project. So if you're a beginner, I strongly suggest that you start with one of the template files available to you from your library and create a new project. On the top of the interface, you have this ribbon where all the tools are organized as per their functions. If you want to build an architecture model, you can go into architecture tab and start using these tools available to you. If you want to build a structure model, you have all the necessary tools for creating a structure model here. If you are an MEP engineer and you'd like to create an MEP model, you can go to the systems tab where all the necessary tools are available to you. Let's start by creating an architectural model. A contextual tab has appeared, which shows me the tools I need for either placing a wall or modifying it. Under the ribbon, I have an options bar where I can choose different options for creating this wall. Let's say I want to make this wall 4,000 millimeter high. Bottom of the interface, you have a status bar, which is showing you the status of your work. Currently, it's showing me that I have to click to enter wall start point. So let's click to enter wall start point. The status bar is showing me that right now I'm moving in horizontal direction. If you keep an eye on your status bar, it not only shows you the status of your work, but also shows you some tips and tricks. So right now it's showing me that space flips orientation. So it's giving me a tip that if I press my space bar, I have the opportunity to flip exterior into interior and interior into exterior. I'm going to create a few walls on my floor plan here and escape to come out of the wall too. On the quick access toolbar on the top, you have some tools that you most frequently use. One of the tools that you most frequently will use is going to the 3D model. So I'm going to click on this house button and go to my 3D view. You can use your central mouse button to zoom in and zoom out of your 3D view. You can also use your central mouse button by pressing it to pan around your view. By pressing shift and the central mouse button, you're able to orbit around your 3D view as well. In your project browser, you can go to any of these views, double click on one to open it. So project browser is basically your list of everything that you have in your project. All the views, all the schedules, all the sheets, all the object library, all your families are listed here. You can tile all the views to see them simultaneously. So I can go into view and tile my views to see where I am. If I click on one object, you can see how that object gets selected in all different views. If I make change in any one view, that change instantly gets reflected in all different views. This is one of the main features of systems like Revit from which it has got its name. Revise instantly. Revit. You can switch to tab views anytime that you want by going into view and tab views. You can switch between the active views by clicking here or pressing control plus tab. When you select an element, the properties palette is showing you all the information that is connected to that element. When I escape and select nothing, the properties palette is showing me all the information of this active view. So if I go into 3D view, the properties palette will show me the information of the 3D view. These properties palette and the project browser are floating windows. You may close them if you need a larger workspace. Anytime retrieve them by going into view, user interface and project browser, user interface properties. You can also dock them on the interface wherever you like. 
So I can dock them on the top, on the bottom, or I can dock them on the right. I can resize it, or I can dock them on the left. I can also dock my project browser and my properties in the same direction at the same place and I alternate between the two from here. Some people like to keep project browser and the properties window on top of one another. Now let's change the graphic display of this 3D view by going into the view control bar where you have tools necessary to control the view and change its graphic display to wireframe, hidden line, shaded, or realistic. So Revit interface is quite simple. You have a workspace where you are going to work in your model. You have ribbon where all the tools are organized as per their function. The quick access toolbar that gives access to tools that you most frequently use. The project browser that is an inventory of everything that you have in the project, all the views, all the sheets, all the families, all the schedules, everything that is part of your project. Properties palette that shows you the information of your selection. The view control bar that has the combination of tools that you need to control the view appearance. Status bar that shows you the status of what you're doing and also gives you some tips and tricks. So before we move on to the next episode, I invite you to do a small exercise with me. Launch your Revit and start a new project file by using one of the templates available to you in your library. Go to Architecture tab and create an architectural wall. From the Quick Access toolbar, open your default 3D view. From the Project Browser, go to the North Elevation. In your View tab, try tiling the views. Try to select an element and make a change and see if that change gets instantly updated in other views as well. When you have selected the wall, check if the contextual tab has appeared in the ribbon. In the properties palette, check some properties of the wall that you've selected. Deselect the element by pressing escape and check what information does the properties palette show. I have all the steps required for this exercise listed here. You may pause this video at this point and try following these steps on your computer. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please feel free to get in touch with me. I will be happy to support you in your journey to re learning Revit. In the next episode, we are going to talk about different types of Revit elements. What do categories, families, type and instance these terms really mean? So I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.